What's going on guys? Welcome to your $1,400 third stimulus check update, stimulus package update and news report for Wednesday, March 17th. Today is finally the big day for millions and millions of Americans. Today is March 17th, which means banks are now going to take those pending transactions of the $1,400 stimulus checks. They will release it and now you can take or spend your money. That is the good news. What we do know and I've received a handful of emails already this morning that yes, people are receiving their checks. This is through direct deposit only. Just wanna be 100% clear. This is the day that the direct deposits of the $1,400 stimulus checks, this is the day they are being released. So even though you may have already received yours, that's great. You may have had a bank that pretty much pre-funded your stimulus check, but the majority of banks, the majority of Americans were still waiting until this morning. So if you check your bank account and you did get direct deposit, chances are you received your funds this morning. Now, if you normally get a paper check, just understand you will most likely get this next week. What we do know is the IRS has stated they are sending out paper checks on March 22nd. That is this coming Monday. If you got a uh, prepaid uh, debit card last round in the $600 stimulus checks, you will most likely receive another prepaid debit card. It will not be loaded uh, or loaded on your existing card. So just keep that in mind. Your existing card is going to be pretty much no good to you, but they will send you a new one. And this one will most likely be sent out on March 29th. You should be seeing this in the first week of April. This again, and the reason I say the first week of April is actually pretty simple because when the IRS sends out these cards, when they send out the paper checks, they send it through the United States Postal Service. And the United States Postal Service normally takes about five days to get something mail or delivered from uh, mailed to actually being accepted by know you so just understand it's going to take a little bit of time what i can tell you is if you got a stimulus check for a smaller amount and this is something that i've heard a lot of people saying is the problem right now they receive their stimulus check however it's not for the full twenty eight hundred dollars for them and their child here's what we know about that okay Right now, there's very little information going on or going about simply because we don't have that much information yet, okay? We haven't really, or the IRS at least, has not gotten gotten much information as to, okay, why are these people not receiving their full payments? Uh, they're obviously not giving us updates on that yet, obviously, because they don't have that much information either. But what I can tell you at this point is in the bill, it states that if you do not receive your full amount, you can go and get the rest of it. However, and this is where it gets a little tricky, you will not be able to get it until you file your 2021 tax return, which is gonna be in 2022. So it's pretty much a year from today. Here's the issue, and this is what happened last time. President Biden stepped up, he stepped in, and he demanded the IRS find the money for millions of people that did not get a $600 stimulus check in the last round. And he demanded that, and that is good. This could also happen again. And it all depends on how many people the IRS is predicting do not have their stimulus money. So just keep that in mind. If you already received your funds and you're good to go, great, you can move on. If not, just understand you might have to wait one year to get the rest of your money. And again, that's not great news, but that's currently what we know. Now, a lot of you have been already saying that, yes, I, I'm glad I got the money because I need to go pay for this bill. I need to go pay some back rent. I need to go pay you know, this bill, that bill, whatever, right? Well, according to Warren Buffett, he says that you should only be using this stimulus money to do one of two things. Number one, you should pay off credit card debt. He says that there's a lot of people that owe credit card debt simply because of this pandemic. Well, what should you do? Do you save your money and pay the additional you know, 20% on your credit card? No, 
pay off your credit card or pay it down so it's a more manageable amount. He says he does not recommend you take your $1,400 stimulus check and pay more into your mortgage simply because if your mortgage has a very low interest rate, which chances are it does, unless you received a mortgage uh, you know, 40 years ago, chances are it has a fairly low interest rate. So because of that, it does not make sense to put more money onto your mortgage. Now, he also says if you don't do, if you don't have credit card debt, he does not recommend you save it, he recommends you invest it. And the stock market is a great place to invest. Now, currently, as of recording this video, the stock market is not looking great, but this is a good time to buy. A lot of people are gonna look at the stock market and if you're fairly new, you're probably thinking, well, and if you go look at the stock market today, everything is down, everything's down. But it's not because these are bad companies, it's not because we're really uh, going to go under, it's simply because today, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell is going to speak at 2.30, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And what he says or doesn't say in this meeting or in this press conference is going to be uh, kind of a, a big deal to the market. So just to warn you guys, we will most likely see stocks sell off today. However, this doesn't mean you should sell your stocks. This just means this is the time you need to buy. Stocks are cheaper. And then next week when they go up, like they always do, then you can start making some money. So if you got a $1,400 stimulus check, I recommend you either go and put it into Robinhood or Webull. They're both great apps. I'll even put a link down in the description box below so you can go and sign up for Webull and get two free stocks valued up to possibly $1,850. So all you gotta do is deposit $100 and you can get those two free stocks. Now, now that we're talking about money, let's move on a little bit. There's currently a big push by Democrats to get this two to three trillion dollar infrastructure bill passed. Some are saying that this infrastructure bill is actually just a cover for a tax bill. Others are currently saying that no, there will be more stimulus in this bill than the previous $1.9 trillion stimulus package. But this makes me wonder why do we even call it an infrastructure bill if the majority of what is going to be in here is going to be uh, you know, tax cut or tax um, hikes, not cuts, and also money for stimulus. Yes, there's gonna be some infrastructure in here, but as to how much and what percentage of this bill will be for infrastructure, that is currently something we don't know. What I can tell you is that yesterday, President Biden opened the doors to a whole new uh, possibility moving forward with this package and any future packages. When asked, President Biden was asked, uh, does regarding the filibuster, he was asked, choosing between preserving the filibuster or advancing your agenda, you know, what does this mean? And President Biden said that he wants to bring back the talking filibuster. He understands why so many people are frustrated because the filibuster is stalling every single bill that ever makes it to the Senate. The Senate is where everything goes to die. It's because their rules are different. President Biden said he wants to bring back the, talk, the talking filibuster from when he was in the Senate. Now, by doing this, President Biden is taking the pressure off of Democrats because normally if you, the current the rules, the way they, they sit is the majority has to go and find the 60 votes and the, minor, the minority just sits back and waits and like, yeah, you're not going to find it. So the bill is going to die anyway. Well, that's what's currently being um, done is right now, Democrats have to go and find 60 votes, which means every single bill has to get 10 Republicans on board unless they do a Senate or um, a budget reconciliation through the Senate like they did on the $1.9 trillion stimulus package that passed about a week ago. But a talking filibuster, which is what President Biden is proposing, and he wants to switch back to this, which I believe Joe Manchin is supportive of a talking filibuster because he said that he wants to see it be grueling. He wants to see it be difficult. It needs to be impactful. And this is one way to do that. So a talking filibuster would mean the minority party who is the Republican party at this time, they would be required to talk incessantly until they give up 
or the majority simply decides to pull the bill. And this is what President Biden is talking about, is if the minority wants to prevent a bill from going through, they actually stand up, they talk and talk and talk until either they give up and are tired of talking or the, the majority decides, okay, you're right, or I, I'm tired of this, let's just move on, we're gonna pull the bill. And so that's what's gonna happen. Well, here's what we know. Okay, again, here's what we know. Right now, all it takes is for somebody to stand up and say, yeah, uh, you know, I, I don't support this or whatever, right? And it, it makes it very simple. And they, they pretty much threaten a filibuster. They, they don't actually do it, they threaten it. And just the, the threat of that means, okay, well, this isn't gonna pass. And so right now, what President Biden is saying is, no, let's get rid of that, let's change it. And if this happens, okay, and I, the reason I bring all this up is because by changing the filibuster, it would require Republicans to argue nonstop to get an upcoming bill stalled or rejected. If it's two, three, maybe $4 trillion for a Build Back Better plan, you can bet Republicans are going to try to block this. But what we see in this next bill will most likely be bigger than what was in the previous bill, which means Republicans are not going to support this at all. But we do know that Bernie Sanders, he wants to get the $15 minimum wage included. And this is one way he can do that because the, the Senate Republicans would have to stand up and reject this bill and just talk and talk and talk, which chances are I don't think they would do that for that long. I don't think Bernie Sanders would pull this bill. I don't think Senate uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer would pull it either. Chances are this would pass if it's to a talking filibuster. We also know Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is fighting for student loan forgiveness. This is another thing that if, if, if we were to do a talking filibuster and have a talking filibuster in the Senate, the issue is Every single American could go watch the the, spe the people talk and they could see, okay, they keep on arguing against this, but why when they have said, yes, we should see some type of minimum wage increase, maybe not to $15, but we should see something. We should see your know, students get some type of relief, maybe not to the tune of $50,000, but they should get something. And we also know progressives wanna see a monthly stimulus check, and they also want to see permanent changes to the, the child tax credit. So these are just a couple things that, that progressives want. But based off past history from Democrats that have been holding the majority in both houses and the presidency, which happened back when, uh, when President Biden was vice president, that was the last time, well, what we do know is they have changed their ways of getting these bills passed. Before, they would try to create a bill that they, they thought the American people really wanted and would enjoy. Well, they decided no, that didn't work. So now what they're doing, and this is something that we got reports on on Monday as well as yesterday, but now what they're doing is they're passing bills that the American people have already stated they want. These are the popular bills. So just keep that in mind. And this is why the $15 minimum wage provision will most likely be included into this next bill, simply because uh, what we've heard from multiple reports is about eight out of 10 Americans think the minimum wage is currently too low. And about 75% of Americans believe there should be a $15 minimum wage um, bill. That should be the, the bottom, $15. So right now that's currently where we're at. This is also why there will be something for student loan forgiveness as to how much it ch chances are it's not going to be fifty thousand dollars. It'll most likely be ten, and this is also why some legislation that has already passed could be modified in, in many ways. Uh, let, me, let me just give you an example really quick. But one of the things that we know right now, let's say you owe um, some back rent, okay, to your landlord. Here's what we know. If you decide to vacate the property, let's say you get evicted, you just leave on your own, right? You just move out. Here's what we know as of right now, the, the way the bill is written. If you move and you are not occupying that uh, piece of property, okay, that dwelling, the issue is you cannot qualify for rental relief under the current bill because of the way it's written. You have to be the occupant of that, that, that dwelling, that property. 
If you are not, then the government will not give you any or pay off any of your back rent that is still due. That will be on you. So if you vacate a property, just understand, okay, it doesn't matter if you are living somewhere else, if it's better, if it's worse, if you're homeless, it does not matter. You could be living in your car. If you vacate the property and you're not at that property anymore, then no, you cannot qualify for rental assistance. And so that's a big issue right now because a lot of people, they just got so far behind on rent, they decide, all right, you know, I just give up. I'm, I'm going to move in with family, you know, and, and we'll figure this out later. So just understand if that's you and you, let's say you moved in with family and you vacated that property. Now that property is rented to somebody else. What you need to understand is now the rental assistance uh, agencies out there that have billions of dollars to help you get back on your feet with and pay off any of this back rent and even future rents. The problem with that is they will not pay you. They will not pay your landlord because that's not technically your landlord anymore. That's just now a new debt that you owe. So just keep that in mind. But this rule is making it more difficult for many Americans. And this is something that we could see changed in this next bill. It could, could at least be modified. And there's many other changes that we could see as well. But as of right now, there's a lot going on that seems uh, that the $1.9 trillion stimulus package and the new Build Back Better plan, we're going to see these two things collide very soon. As to what happens once they do, well, We'll just have to wait and see. But as of right now, that is currently what we know. That's currently what we are hearing. As always, as I know more, I promise I will share more. Consider subscribing so I can continue to keep you updated on everything that's going on. And I'll see you guys on the next one.